Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial or Geek Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. This is a moto tutorial for creating a sofa or daybed like what you see here uh, before you. Now, before we begin with this moto project, I want to uh, give the proper credits right up front, and that is uh, the idea, the, uh, the inspiration, and the creativity behind this goes out solely to Brett Chamberlain of Brett Chamberlain and Associates. I saw a link to some tutorials that he posted over in the Moto Forum at Luxology and in his Pool Villa tutorial of the many things that he makes this particular sofa day bed is one of them and I liked his modeling approach and I thought this would be a really uh, good looking and easy to make model and I wanted to share that with you today so this is the object we will be making here in Moto and uh, I'm gonna get my blank scene and my layout uh, all set up to begin with so turn on your copy of Moto follow along and I'll see you in just a few minutes welcome back okay to begin with with furniture and objects that humans interact with it's very important to establish scale and proportion of that item because if the item is not the if the model is not in scale and proportion one to what we would expect it to be visually uh, it doesn't fit well inside of a scene when you start adding humans to it so I'm gonna make life real easy on myself and bring in a scaled human figure. So I'm going to come up here to layout and in my human tab double click on that and I'm just going to bring in a human that I can use to establish scale, size, and proportion for my object. So with him let me move him out of the way okay on a new mesh I'm gonna spin around to a top view here and come over here to cube hold down control and I'm just gonna drag out a cube I'm not worried about its size just yet and oh, I guess I should start scaling it down some and let's put it right over to him. Now I have a sofa in my living room and the cushions of my sofa the top of the cushions hit me right here against the back of the knee. So if so I'm gonna make this object about this height that way when this figure sits down uh, one his feet aren't dangling uh, above the ground like some child in a in a high chair and two it's not so low that when he sits down his knees are resting up underneath his chin so this is about the height that I'm gonna make it uh, the second thing is when I am uh, creating this I'm gonna be doing it from the ground plane upwards rather than with this object say uh, halfway in the ground plane and halfway below if you come over here center selected all it puts it in the center of the scene which is fine that's that's what's what I'm in the end up going to be doing but notice it puts it here uh, halfway above and halfway below the modeling plane so I want this totally on top of the modeling plane. Now in my custom moto setup I have this button that I have called quick drop and all that does is whatever wherever my object is in the scene it puts it right on top of the modeling plane. Uh, you probably don't have a custom button like that so I, uh, I will show you how you can go about doing it in Moto. 
and after I show you how to do it in Modo, um, I'm probably going to be using that quick drop button for the rest of the process. Okay, so if this is my object and I want it on top of the modeling plane, come over here to item mode. And this is why I created my own custom button. You, with your object selected, you got to come over to item mode, come over to edit, down to center to bounding box, and which I know this is off the screen. Come down to center to bounding box, and that opens up another side window. Check bottom, and then come over here, reset all, and it puts it right here where you need it to be. Well, that's all a whole lot of steps, and that's a pain in the neck. That's why I created that little quick button to um, so I can do it with just one one click. Okay, so with this mesh selected, I'm going to select these four corners. B on the keyboard to add a little bevel to that and a roundness level of 3 is good. I don't have any exact uh, dimension in mind for the distance of this this curve here but these are going to be the feet of this this table so I don't want them to be so small and I don't want them to be so large but probably about that size that's pretty good okay and now I'm going to select all these rounded edges Control Z to undo that. Select those rounded edges, and I can hide my little uh, scale guy. Z on the keyboard to for edge extend, and that looks good. I'm gonna come over here to wireframe mode. Come over here to a right view, vertice mode. I'm gonna select those two vertices, those two vertices. R scale, which brings up the scale tool, and I'm going to scale this in until this number reads 1.03. There we are. Now I'll spin around to a front view, select those two, select those two, and I'm just going to do the same thing again. Scale them in until it reads 103. There we are. And back to OpenGL and perspective. Make sure. All right, some of these polygons got flipped, so select them, F on the keyboard to flip them so that they're all facing me, and those got flipped, F on the keyboard, there we are, okay. Edge mode, double click that edge, and let's hit the bevel tool, and bring in a little bit of a bevel there, whoopsie, I want zero for the round. There we are. And polygon mode, bevel that in just a little bit and delete that polygon. Okay. And with polygon, whoopsie, spacebar to drop that bevel tool. I'm going to select these feet now. And I'm going to add some thickness to them. So use my thicken tool over here click in the viewport and I'm gonna add some inside thickness there we go spacebar to drop that and let's select those loop them shift up arrow up arrow hide that hide that bottom one and now I'm just going to select these top polygons and remove them they serve no purpose spin around underneath and select these bottom ones as well and delete them U to unhide all my polygons okay now I've got roughly the um, the shape of this I want I'm gonna spin around again to a top view new mesh item we need to create a cushion for this so let's grab a cube again and create a square cube and this is uh, well, well 0.5 there we go uh, that's 36 let me see what well, was we'll zero that out and 3.5 and 
be a spur to drop that. I guess we could then selection mode and scale this out a little bit. Okay. Spin back around. Let's drag this up. There we go. Okay. Now I want to add some uh, thickness to this. So B, we're going to bevel that and bring it up approximately the same height as this wooden border here, as the frame of this. And edge mode, double click that bottom edge. P to add a polygon to it. There we are. All right, let's select those sides there and Alt C to bring up the edge slice tool. Control Z, excuse me, let me do it this way first. Uh, Alt C. And I want a count of two. Mode set to symmetry. And I'm just going to create a square here. That looks good. Select those two. Alt C. Click in the viewport and it will automatically do the same thing. Now, if I hit my D key to subdivide this, if I hit it twice, it adds a, uh, a nice roundness to this. So I can now just place it right on top of the frame for this. Perhaps I might want to scale it up just a hair. Okay, let me save this. And there is our the first piece for our model. Let's select these two. Let's uh, come over here to Automatic Action Center. Let's slide it right over here where our man is. And let me come to a right view. If I move it right down here on the plane, on the ground plane down here to zero, you see this hits him. It needs to be a little bit larger. It definitely needs to be a little larger. So in right side view, I'm going to take this first one here and I'm going to drop it down to the ground plane. So, uh, well, I'll do it the way I showed you. Item mode, we'll go here to edit, uh, center to bounding box, bottom, and reset all. And grab our cushion. Okay. Now what I want to do is scale both of these up a little bit. But if I just hit R, chances are, uh, oftentimes anyway, it will scale from the center out. So let me come over here to selection. Because I dropped it down to the bound to the to the ground floor, now notice when I scale it up, it scales from the bottom upwards, and that is a big help. So I want this to meet this man's leg just about right at the knee, the back of the knee, or maybe just a little bit lower, and that's probably a little too much. Let's come to another a right side view again. There we go. Okay, well, this thing got... Uh, this is the center. We need to move this to the center. And let's move this up. Okay. with this cushion selected. Um, it's just too perfect the way it is. So, Because if you come over here, shade, options, wireframe, turn off the wireframe mode, it's just too perfect. I want to add a little bit of irregularity to the cushion. So, come over here to deform tab, soft drag. If I use my right mouse button, I can um, adjust my brush size. 
and with my soft drag. And come on now. Oh, there we are. It was on in item mode. So soft drag. There we are. I'm just going to add a little bit of irregularity here. A few little bumps and dips like it's been used over the years. So it's not too perfect. Okay, I'm going to select the body. I'm going to select uh, some of those polygons. L to loop that. And I want to hit the B key to bring up my bevel tool. Scratch that. I don't want bevel. Uh, Alt C to bring up my edge slice tool. And I'm going to do a count of three. Make them very small in here. Now come over here to edge mode. And I'm just going to move these edges down right about there. This is just a little... Uh, design feature for in here. Okay, with that center edge selected, I'm going to hit my R key. Now, what I want to do is I want to um, bring in the scale of this. So, if I if I try to use if I try to use this center circle here, it's going to be a little difficult. It's easier for me to do it over here. And I want to do it evenly along the X, Y, and Z. So this little O right here, I'm going to click it, and now you see equal, equal, equal sign. Now if I make an adjustment to one, all of them will be uh, follow that same adjustment because of that equal sign. Equals, and boom, bring it down to where it is 99 f come on now I clicked off so let me redo it okay there we go spacebar drop that okay let me try this again here bring up the R key for 99.5. There we go. Spacebar to drop that. Okay. Now we've got our first item. I'm going to take the uh, polygons from the seat cushion. Control X and Control V. And I'll just paste them in here. And we'll call this um, seat. And we will save. And that is it for this first part. The second part is going to be just as easy as well as the third and any additional uh, parts of this video. So that's it for this first part. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller, and I'll see you on the next one.